Please come forward and join me at this time. Oliver, I'm going this way. How we doing? How we doing? How we doing? It's good to see you. It's good to be together. Do you have a good week? Yeah. yeah? What'd you do this week? Went to school? Went to school? Went to school? Went home? Did some homework, maybe? Maybe a little bit? What did your hands do this week? Right. Right. They did, did some writing. Your hands did some writing. Your hands do anything this week? Writing. Writing. Writing? Did your hands do any texting? Texting on the phone? No. no texting on the phone. No, no texting. Uh, what about video games? Your hands, a little bit of video games. Uh, what about computer games? Computer games, typing, typing, typing. Our hands did that. You know, there used to be a saying, idle hands are... Yeah, exactly. It's uh, go home and ask your parents about how to finish that sentence. Idle hands are, they, idle hands are the devil's playground. That you get into all kinds of trouble if you have idle hands. And our gospel lesson this morning talks to us about how some religious leaders from Jerusalem traveled all the way up to Galilee to check in on Jesus and his disciples because they'd heard about them. And they're watching Jesus and his disciples carefully, and they notice that Jesus' disciples don't wash their hands before they eat, which is one of the traditions that's been handed down. I mean, it's good hygiene to wash your hands. I wash my hands before I eat. You should wash your hands before you eat. That it's a good thing to do, it's a healthy thing to do, it's a hygiene thing to do. But in the ancient world, in the Jewish tradition, to wash your hands meant that that was an act that kept you connected with God. And Jesus says, uh, well, you know, you come up here from Jerusalem to Galilee, and the first thing you do with your hands is point your finger. Do you know anyone who points their finger? Have you ever been in a classroom and the teacher looked at you and pointed their finger at you? Is that usually a good thing or a bad thing? In my experience, it has not been a good thing when I'm in class and the teacher pointed their finger at me. It meant that I was going to be uh, shared some insight that I wasn't aware of, or they wanted to get my attention. Well, the Pharisees come up and they point their finger at Jesus' disciples and say, uh, you're not washing your hands. Why not? Why don't you follow the tradition of the elders? And Jesus says, well, it's like this. If you want to get your hands right, you have to get your hearts right. You want to get your hands right and do the right things with your hands, you have to get your heart right. And where do you go to get your heart right? Do you go to the doctor to get your heart right? They hook you up on machines and listen, and there's lights that go, and, and the, there's a little blip that goes up and down. That's what doctors see when they check your heart. Is that how you get your heart right? Jesus says to get your heart right, and he quotes from Isaiah, the people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as God's commandment the precepts of men. And so if you want to get your heart right, you come to worship. This is where we come to get our heart right. And we come into worship to hear the promises of God. The promises of God are more powerful than anything we can hear anywhere else in the world. And to hear the promises of God gets our hearts inclined in the right direction. We begin to lean toward God and feel ever more fully connected to God. And one of God's promises is that we're loved. Jeremiah says we're loved with an everlasting love. You are loved with an everlasting love, which means has there ever been a moment in your life where you weren't loved? God's love is an everlasting love. God loves you all the time. There may be times in our lives when we feel like we're not loved. 
because life gives us ups and downs, and sometimes we stumble and fall, and sometimes we feel lonely. But God is always with us, and God is always loving us. We are always loved. That's one of God's promises. Forever and ever, will there ever be a time when we're not loved? No, we're always loved. So that's one thing to remember. Another thing to remember, promise of God. How do you feel about you? If you were to sum yourself up with one word, what would it be? Well, let me save you the word. The word is awesome. Awesome. You are awesome. Some days we don't feel awesome, but we are awesome. The, we're created in the image of God. God is awesome. Therefore, we are awesome. And, and in the Psalms, they fearfully and wonderfully made God made you to be awesome. Are you awesome? Let your heart know you're awesome. Tell your heart you're awesome. And you're precious. Paul says that God paid a great price for us, that God could have us in his arms forever. And so we are loved, we are awesome, and we are precious. And when you know you're loved and awesome and precious, what can your hands do? Well, what do your hands do in worship? Pray. Our hands pray sometimes like this. Our hands praise sometimes like this. Sometimes, I mean, would that beautiful music have happened without some people committing their hands to making that music come together so beautifully? Beautiful. Their hearts and their hands working together up to the glory of God. That's what praise does. So we pray with our hands. We praise with our hands. Did you greet anyone this morning when you came to church with your hands? Do you say, hey, how you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Yeah. See, we greet, we connect with our hands. We uh, help with our hands. We serve with our hands. We're going to see the deacons are going to serve communion in a little while. We serve with our hands. We bless with our hands. And if you've ever been in worship where the minister stood up and put water on somebody's head, what that called? baptism with our hands new life new beginning when our hearts are right our hands will know what to do and we come to worship to make our hearts right to get our hearts right to remember that we're loved and awesome and precious and to say god my hands belong to you now put them to work to the praise and glory of your name. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for the opportunity you give us to gather together and to remember who we are and whose we are because this world can knock us down and make us wonder. But you speak the truth to our hearts that we are loved and awesome and precious children of God. May our hands go to work to bring praise and glory to your name. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. I brought you a couple of things for today. When your hearts are right, your hands will know what to do. And so you get a heart. Everybody gets a heart. Heart cookies today. Heart cookies today. And one for you and one for your brother. And when our hearts are right, our hands will know what to do. So I brought you something for your hands. It's called a handy snack. There's Ritz crackers on one side and cheese on the other. Open it up, and your hands will know what to do. And church school is happening out that way. And now 